Brilliant. Thanks, Alistair. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Joseph for Glen Dutch. I've been working for the UTU uh, not very long, for about seven months now. Um, and I will be leading the uh, presentation on shared parental leave. Uh, I'll just make sure I can share my screen and hopefully we'll go through this PowerPoint. And as Alistair says, just make sure that you put any questions or comments that you have into the Q&A or chat box. So I'm hoping that this is coming up absolutely fine and everyone can see what I'm seeing in terms of my uh, PowerPoint. So shared parental leave. Shared parental leave is one of those really tricky things that has been quite complex to navigate through. It originated in 2015 and for that it's a relatively new initiative. But what we're seeing now is a lot of teachers trying to understand how they can best make use of it. The basics. So ultimately, shared parental leave must be taken in complete weeks as either one continuous block or in most of the cases when dealing with teaching in discontinuous blocks where you, you have leave, you work for a bit, then you take another period of leave and then work for a bit. Uh, it must be taken between the baby's birth and first birthday. So essentially you've got a year and you do not have to share the leave or pay if you don't want to. So it's a bit of confusing seeing as the title says shared parental leave, but you do not have to share it with your partner. Shared parental leave can only be taken by employees. So people accessing this webinar will be employees. So that's kind of a given. And shared parental pay, it's not great. It's the same as statutory maternity pay, £156 per week. There's not an awful lot, but there are ways that you can maximise extra pay on top, which we'll go into later. Um, and the main reason why most people are using it is because you can get paid in full over the periods of school closure and note that I'm saying periods of school closure to you and me that's pretty much means the holidays uh, if you have any problems or questions make sure you contact your local union office they'll be able to help you out so let's crack on so the main sources for this presentation we have used the Northern Ireland um, government website it's got quite good information there. We've looked at the legislation and this, the whole uh, shared parental leave is encapsulated by the regulation set down in 2015, as I said. The Labour Relations Agency has also got some good information. Uh, I've consulted with the Department of Education teachers pay team to make sure that all the information I'm giving you is absolutely correct. Uh, Maternity Action is also a fantastic website. And then finally, obviously, we've consulted with our own specialists and solicitors within the three unions. So, eligibility. To qualify for shared parental leave, you or your partner must share the main responsibility for the child. I'd hope that that's kind of a bit of a given. Um, the next one is the employment criteria. So that's pretty much all of us um, who's working in education will have this, you pass the employment and earnings test. I'll go on to talk about that, but the majority of all of us accessing this webinar will automatically fulfill the employment criteria. You need to have been continuously employed by your school for at least 26 weeks by the 15th week before the due date. Sounds confusing, but it's roughly pretty much from the conception of the child or if you're adopting um, when you've been notified of a match okay so it's roughly that kind of nine ten months before and then obviously you need to make an application you've got to give eight weeks notice to the employer that you're looking to end your maternity and move on to uh, shared parental leave and shared parental pay if both you and your partner satisfy the tests you'll both be eligible to share it if only you satisfy the test you can still take shared parental leave and access that shared parental pay 
So this is the um, employment and earnings test that I talked about. Ultimately, within just over a what is it, a year and three three months before the baby is due, your partner must have been working for at least 26 weeks of those, they don't have to be consecutive, and earned at least £30 a week in average in 13 of those 66 weeks. Okay, so for the purposes of your eligibility as um, an education worker, your partner can be employed, they can be self-employed, or they can be an agency worker. I'm going to go on to an example, uh, a worked example of where people are employed and self-employed later, depending on your partner. So don't worry too much about that at this stage. If your partner, however, is unemployed and doesn't fit that criteria set above, you're both not eligible for shared parental leave or shared parental pay. So your partner must be employed or self-employed or an agency worker for you to be eligible. The best way to check this, um, it's an English-based assessment thing, it's a um, gov.uk site, is this little um, eligibility check. It's just some little tick boxes, very simple, very straightforward, and you can kind of do a work example to see if you are eligible. If your partner's not eligible, don't worry, because you still are. Okay. I spoke to the um, Department of Education pay team to ask them about how this works for temporary and those on NISTRA payment. And obviously they came back with temporary teachers are on the same terms and conditions as a permanent teacher. So you can access this. However, there's a bit of a caveat because a supply teacher cannot easily present for work during those holiday periods because the school is under no obligation to book or pay for them. So you have to ask your question of whether it'll actually work out for you. What it could do is extend that period um, that you can take shared parental pay, but you still won't be getting paid if you do return to work. Um, I'm happy to take questions on that later if you want any more clarification. So this is what it is in most cases. Um, it's normally for women teachers to maximise their pay whilst they're on the leave by coming to work when there's a period of school closure, i.e. your holiday. Um, sometimes only the one parent in a couple is eligible. Um, and this means you can't share it between you. So here we have a little bit of an example. We've got a teacher here and we have their partner. Uh, the, this, their partner is a self-employed tradesperson. Because they're self-employed, they're not eligible to receive shared parental leave or pay themselves. That doesn't stop the teacher from getting it, because what it means is that that teacher receives 100% share of the shared parental leave and shared parental pay. Okay. Let's have another look at another example. This time we've got the teacher and their partner is an employee, okay? Which means they are eligible to have a share of the share parental leave and share parental pay. You can be split in any percentage breakdown you want. Now, share parental leave, you have obviously up to a year as we discussed earlier. Shared parental pay, you have 37 weeks. In total, it's 39, but the first two weeks of that has to be maternity. So we talk about it as 37 in to uh, 39 in total, but 37 to share between you. You don't have to share it with your partner if you don't want to, but I would talk to them about it in case it's something that you might wish to do. Uh, you can take it at the same time. I know that this has uh, worked in a lot of cases um, in that the mother and the uh, partner take it at the same time so they're both utilizing it that can work quite well uh, and it can be a really good way to extend on poor paternity provisions so obviously um, paternity could be pretty poor in many cases and many uh, employment situations so using shared parental leave 
may help that partner, as particularly the, the male in this case, get more time. So, when do you stop your maternity? In order to use share parental leave or share parental pay, you have to stop your maternity leave. Okay, you can't go back onto maternity leave once you've stopped it. It has to be one or the other. Uh, when you do that will depend on when your due date is. We call it an EWC. That basically means expected week of confinement is just your due date. And when you start that again is kind of when that due date is going to fall near to holiday periods and how you can best utilize it. We're going to do a worked example in a moment. Uh, to kind of show you that um, it has to be taken from the birth of your child you can take up to a, a year as I said uh, but two of those must be maternity and uh, of that 52 weeks okay um, you have a total of 32 weeks plus the two which is the maternity paid at either occupational and statutory maternity pay or shared parental pay you don't get 39 weeks for one and the other. You just get 39 weeks in total. So how does this then look? We've got an example here. So today is the 14th of March, 2023. And this uh, woman teacher, her baby is due today. She started her maternity leave on the week commencing the 13th. So yesterday. She's on UPS2. I just picked a random uh, salary banding. She's full time and she doesn't want to share it with her partner. Okay. Like most of the scenarios we do, women don't tend to share it with their partners. So let's have a look at how it would look if it was just a maternity leave without using shared parental leave for 12 months. The entitlement is you get four weeks at 100% pay. Two weeks at 90% pay, 12 weeks at 50% pay plus your SMP, which is your £156, 66 pence at the moment. And then you get a further 21 weeks of statutory maternity pay. So those are the first 39 weeks. Obviously, there's a remainder of 13 weeks, but that wouldn't be paid, but you're still allowed to take the leave. So over that 12 months, um, in this example, that teacher would earn 14163 What I have to say is, obviously, this is before, obviously, all the other deductions. This is a gross figure. So this is before your student loan, your national insurance, your pension, et cetera, et cetera, your tax. Okay, this is just as an example. So what we'll now do is we'll have a look how we can get some extra money or extra income over that 12 months by utilizing shared parental leave and shared parental pay. So again, this is on a 12 month thing. The first four weeks, it's just still maternity. You know, remember this is based on today. Uh, next two weeks is 90% pay. So still on maternity. And then we get to week 16. OK, what this person is going to do is they're going to finish their maternity now because 16 weeks from today would take you up to roughly when the summer holidays start, that first period of closure. So she would stop her maternity at this point. She would return to work for the summer, approximately seven weeks, OK, for which she will receive 100 percent of her pay. She then starts her first block of shared parental leave. So week 17 to 27 is shared parental leave block one on which she is on the shared parental pay, which is £156.66 a week. OK, so she does roughly 10 weeks of that. She then goes back to work. She ends that shared parental leave block one. She goes back to work for the Halloween break and earns 100% pay. Following that week, she then starts her 
shared parental leave block two. And I'm pretty sure you can guess which holiday it's going to be next. That's going to take us up to Christmas when she returns, earns another 100% pay over the Christmas and starts her final block. You can only take up to three blocks after Christmas. Okay, and that's taken us up to the 39 week mark. But what we've done is we've actually extended this over a period of time by utilizing those 10 weeks, the ones in red where we're working. So we've extended that timing of pay by an extra 10 weeks, which means that there's only a remainder of three weeks left where she'll um, go on to nil pay. The difference then when you total it up is 21,000. So by utilizing shared parental leave and shared parental pay, this one example, just based on today, the difference is 6,858, which is a significant difference when you're looking at the worked examples between just maternity and then utilizing shared parental leave. Now, how your shared parental leave will obviously differ depending on how close you are on your due date to the holiday periods and what time of year. And that will affect the, um, the, the monetary um, enhancement. But you, you just go through those worked out scenarios and try and decide what's best for you. What a lot of people also do is actually they like to come back even a week earlier before the summer to um, work over the baker days. It's entirely up to you in your circumstances. So looking at that same example, thinking about that same example, I put it in a timeline. I find that quite visually easy for me to understand. So here we have the 52 weeks of the year. Okay. The first example, which is the maternity only, looks a bit like this. You've got a block of your maternity pay and then you're on nothing. Okay. So it, within that maternity pay, you've got the, the staggered down pay, but essentially it's just maternity pay for 39 weeks and then you're on nothing. When we utilize a shared parental leave, it goes like this. We have the maternity pay up until the summer. The member then works, starts shared parental leave block one, which is that period leading up to the um, Halloween break. Then they start shared parental leave block two, which takes them up to Christmas. They then work over Christmas. That's an extra two weeks pay. And then they start shared parental leave block three. Okay. So the amber and the green blocks add up to the 39 weeks, which means that there's only three weeks where she'll be on nil pay. She could go back to work at that point, uh, but obviously that's entirely up to you and your circumstances. So that's kind of how it works on a timeline. Additionally to shared parental leave, you can also have in touch days, just like you would for maternity. Uh, you still get those 10 maternity keeping in touch days. You're not um, losing them, but obviously they can only be taken during maternity. But in shared parental leave, you get up to 20 days shared parental leave in touch days. So we call them ITDs. Um, they are optional. You don't have to do them, but they need to be agreed by you and your employer. So you, with the principal, essentially. And they can be used, they're really good for things like briefings, curriculum development meetings, in service trainings, open events if you wanted to go to them, those kind of things. And they are a great way, as I said here, to top up the pennies, especially if you've gone down to shared parental pay or nil pay, because you'd be paid at your, your daily rate. Uh, but a bit of a warning, and I'll just flash that one back up again, before going into work, agree with your principal what work you're going to be doing and how you will be paid. Just get that written in an email so it's absolutely clear for all parties involved. Those are the in-touch days. Next one is, how do I go about applying for shared parental leave? And this is where it can be really, really confusing. 
There's no set format to use. But the things that you must include are knowing your dates. So trying to calendar it out. I tend to use sort of timelines, but you can do it however you choose um, of when you want to finish your mat leave, when you want your share parental leave blocks to be. Uh, they will normally coincide with your school's holiday periods. So it's very essential that you use that particular to your school because it can differ. Uh, you need to make a declaration, which is essentially, I am eligible. You need to give your partners information, mostly so if you are sharing, um, but you both need to give consent to prove that you have got the employment and earnings test done. Um, what you'll also need to state is the length of shared parental leave you'll want and how much will be shared parental pay. That will then go on to the DE pay team for them to calculate. But if you're confused about anything, speak to your union. Pick up the phone, drop an email, and they will help you. In terms of forms, the unions have their own specific forms to use, um, but you can also use the ACAS documents. I'm not a particular fan of the ACAS documents. I find them really difficult to navigate, which is why I've kind of made a simplified version. Um, and I know that the NEU has, has done that one as well. We've rattled through that, and I do apologise if I was too quick, but now we've got to the question section. Um, Alistair, do you know if there's any questions? Not at this stage, um, Joseph. Um, right. if, if anybody wants to put a question or, or a comment down in the chat box, we can, we can have a look at that. I think, Joseph, if I can say just on behalf of the, the, the three unions, the way you've explained that and presented that has certainly clarified an awful lot of uh, the, 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 the complex issues that's involved in it. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah, okay, good. Well, oh, I think we've got a question through. Well, just another. Um, how do we get the forms? Um, in terms of the forms, you can just contact your union and they'll give you the specific forms that you need. Um, I've got a next question here from Kira. Does my employer or principal need to agree my shared parental leave? So you have an entitlement to shared parental leave. And there's two types of shared parental leave. And this was in the basics. You can either take a continuous block or a discontinuous block. Okay, where you kind of leave work, leave work. If you're going for a continuous block, your employer a principal has to agree it. It's your entitlement. If you have a discontinuous block, they should agree it. And in most cases, well, 100% of the time I've done it, they always do. Because um, the only, out, the only um, reason as to why they don't have to agree it is that it doesn't suit the needs of the business. Now, that was mostly written for the private sector, obviously. We're operating in the public sector, whereby a discontinuous block, there's no justification that it can't be granted. In fact, I would argue, on what grounds would they actually turn it down? Because you can accrue your holiday whilst you're on maternity leave. That's a legal entitlement, and essentially that's what you're capitalising on. So it really should not be the case that you ever get it turned down. If you do get a request turned down or they're looking for further clarification again come back to your trade union and they will help it out and they can just have that sort of frank discussion and get it squared uh, the webinar is going to be shared and my powerpoint will be sent out as well um got another question here uh, does your partner need to inform their employer even if you aren't going to share the shared parental leave your partner doesn't need to inform their employer, no. Um, if your partner's not going to take it, which is kind of most of the cases, that's fine. He can just go about his business, essentially, that his employer doesn't really even need to know. I think that's the questions so far. There's a couple of questions there, Joseph. Um, the first one, does it affect the school budget and can the principal decline? 
Um, it can affect the school budget, yes, because it's going to come out of the school budget. Uh, they can't decline on that basis because it's a, um, as I said earlier, you have earned that right to uh, the holiday just like anyone else. In fact, if they did decline quoting that, there could, could uh, potentially be a sexual discrimination case because they, they're saying that, well, actually, they're saying no to you working over that holiday period or returning to work. And the comparator would be your colleagues who would just be entitled to it anyway. So that excuse really does wouldn't work in, front, in my eyes. Thanks, Joseph. And, and also I would say that, that like, like all other types of leave that teachers are entitled to, mm. if the employer does decline or refuse the request, there's usually a right of appeal. And at that point, you'd be contacting us uh, to support you through that process. Um, there's another question, Joseph. Uh, if your partner was employed in the south of Ireland, are you still eligible? Um, I, I'm not sure if you would be eligible, uh, unless you can correct me, but I, I think it's you need to be, as you said uh, in, at the start of the presentation, if you need to be employed, it should be employed in the same jurisdiction where the benefit is paid for through the tax system. So you would need to be working in in the north. But that's my, my understanding. I, mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, that's my initial understanding. However... If your partner was employed in the South, are you still eligible? I th I, 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 I the, the initial, sorry, Joseph, for, for butting in there, but I think, I mean, there are some where um, some situations where there is um, a tax is, is looked at between, if you're living in the North and working in the South and vice versa, there are a number of things that are taken into account. But I'm not sure whether this would come into it. But as you said, you, you can take the shared parental leave on your own. So if that is not the case, then you could take it um, on your own. It's one we will look into, um, but I suspect it probably at this point wouldn't permit you to, but it is something we may have to look into. Yeah, don't let it put you off putting an application in any way. It's always better to try for it and then um, get knocked back than to not try at all. Thanks, Joseph, and thanks, Nula, as well. There's another question that's come in. Can your principal ask you to come in and work during the summer holiday? Um, no, no. <laughs> in, in, in the same way as that you can't be directed during that time because you know it goes back to your, your time budget and that sort of aspect of your terms and conditions you can't be directed to come into work because the school's not open it's a period of closure and likewise going back to the comparator scenario they wouldn't be requesting other teachers to come in so why would they um, essentially victimise you. And again, could be sexually discriminate, but that, that would obviously need to be tested. Yeah, the only thing you need to be careful of there is the Baker days, days in which the school is yeah. actually open. So. Yeah. Thanks. Another question, Joseph. If uh, you have been off ill in the weeks up to the 15th week of pregnancy, does that affect your eligibility? No. Okay. Not not to share parental leave or share parental pay, no. No. The only thing there, I suppose, as well, to take into account that if you are off with a pregnancy-related illness um, in the four weeks up to your, whatever your maternity leave is, um, that you will, your maternity will be triggered. So that may have an impact um, on the dates that you're looking at, et cetera, and your time. So it's just a, that's the only um, position that I know of where being off ill could potentially affect it, but it's more to do with the dates as opposed to anything else. Yeah. And then yeah. when it comes to sickness absence as well, just be yeah. mindful that that's a decision for medical experts, not a decision for your principal. We have had situations where uh, a pregnant teacher has, has gone off with a kidney infection and the principal decides that's pregnancy related. Well, with all due respect, myself and Joseph can get a kidney infection, so therefore it couldn't be pregnancy related. So. Um, that decision should be either your GP, your consultant, or the school's occupational health advisor, but certainly it's not a decision that the principal can make. And it, it all depends on what your GP or consultant puts on your sick line. Yeah. If they say it's pregnancy related, and some, some things are, unfortunately some things are, but other than that, um, it shouldn't be. 
Thanks, Sheila. Um, another question has come in. Uh, how will I know my SPL application has been approved? Will I receive confirmation? Uh, yes, you should. So ultimately, you put in your shared parental leave application. You'll go to your principal in the first instance, and they'll normally take it to a governing body meeting where it's just kind of ratified and agreed. And then following that, your principal should write to you probably via email, say, yep, all confirmed. It will go ahead as normal. They'll then pass on the um, required information normally on that application form onto the DE pay team, and then they can get that ball rolling. Obviously, if there is any significant change during your shared parental leave, um, uh, God forbid something happens and it you have to change it, obviously make sure you keep in contact with your principal to let them know and they can then send on the relevant information again onto the DE pay team to um, readjust as per needed. But they'll just they should just write to you in an email following the governing body meeting. Thanks, Joseph. There's no there's no other questions. Um, if, if there are any further questions that folks want to lodge, we'll give you another minute or two. Um, if if there are no further questions, um, we'll probably bring it to a close. Um, and just on behalf of myself and Nulik, I want to thank Joseph for all the hard work that he's put into this. Just just to reinforce one of the points that Joseph made during the presentation, everything that we have covered um, has been checked with the legislation and the department. So the advice is 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 uh, legitimate. Okay. Um, Sorry, one last question here. Is there a particular code needed when using a split or a keeping in touch day? I think there probably is, and schools would know what that code is. Um, I'm not sure what it is myself. Yeah, that would be up to, that would be the principal who'd be filling that in. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be, um, and basically, if the principal doesn't have it, they would just contact the department to ask which code they require. There's certainly nothing for, for the teacher to be concerned no. about. It's a no. men, not a decision. I'd imagine it would be on the same basis as um, the maternity kit day, probably. Yes. Oh, we've got one more question. Do I have to do contact payroll? No, it should be on the... You shouldn't have to. It should be on your application form that you give to your principal, to the governing body, all the information that they need with the dates, etc., and that then gets passed over to the DE team. If the DE pay team have any queries or want to clarify something, they'll likely get back in touch with you. Um, got one more, another question. Uh, can a principal refuse to give kit days or, or is there an entitlement? Uh, they can refuse to give kit days, yeah. It's um, kit days uh, like maternity as well as share parental leave keeping in touch days are at the agreement of both. Um, I would be very, I'd, I'd be upset if people were going to um, start turning away people for keeping in touch. Those are really valuable days. Um, and certainly following a period of um, maternity absence, it can feel relatively isolating. So it's a wonderful way to kind of just reintegrate yourself. Uh, if you ever did get turned down for a keeping in touch day, then again, come back to the union and we can try and square that circle with your principal and sort of help them to understand why it's really important for you to access that, um, that opportunity. Okay, there's no more questions. Um, just to remind people that we will endeavour to get this recording uh, uploaded uh, as soon as we possibly can. And every time we go to stop, there's another question comes in, which is fine, folks. Uh, if my partner is not taking SPL, do I have to complete employment details and national insurance, etc., on forms? Uh, not necessarily, no. Um, your employer doesn't need to know his employment details if you're not sharing it. Um, it's, it's not applicable. All they need to get from your partner is a declaration that they have done that employment and earnings test. Okay, because obviously he needs to prove that he is in some way uh, employed, self-employed or an agency worker. That's basically just checking that he's not unemployed. Thanks, Joseph. Last chance for anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> going once, going twice. Okay. 
Folks, thanks very much. And again, uh, thanks to Joseph and, and Nuala. We'll, we'll get this recording and the presentation on the website, hopefully in the next few days. Um, and also keep an eye on the website because we will be delivering further webinars in the future as part of our joint union training and CPD for reps and members. We're also looking at a number of leadership events in the summer term, as well as our reps training for school reps and health and safety reps. So keep an eye on the websites for updates on that. And uh, thanks again to Neil and Joseph. Thank you. Alistair. Thank you, Alistair. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. All the best, folks. Thanks very much. Thank Bye. you. Bye.